Hello, uh, welcome, Philipp Banzer from the DLD 2016 in Munich, and my next guest is Gabo from uh, the UN uh, Development Program, UN VR Director. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Gabo, for what are me. you doing? You're, you're, you're directing a campaign, a VR campaign for the United Nations? Yeah, so we've started a virtual reality unit in the United Nations uh, in uh, something called the SDG Action Campaign. And uh, we use the power of virtual reality to really get you to go places you can't go to and empathize with people you wouldn't normally empathize with. Uh, we, we can show this. We have it here on the, on the, on the, on the laptop and we can show some, uh, some films you did. I just uh, re reverse it. And the thing is, I can move this around yeah. as if I'm standing in this tent. Exactly. Just tell me what I'm seeing, what we're so seeing. So you're having, you're seeing um, a refugee, Syrian refugee family have dinner. And, and here we have kids. And here you have children who are coming there. So this was shot in Zatri refugee camp. And so you can watch these virtual reality films also on your laptop in a 360 way. But the best way is with a headset right now or with a Google Cardboard where it's 3D, stereoscopic, and you can really uh, get a good sense of what's happening with it. C can I walk through this refugee camp? No. No. At the moment, you can't, but the technology is constantly evolving where we are experimenting with new forms where you'll be able to have a little bit more depth of what and you're where's doing. And where's she? So she's in Jordan in the Zatari refugee camp. She's been there for over two years. She's 12 years old. And it's about, it's a story about her just missing home and but also showing you what the camp is like, you know, uh, because I think most people haven't seen what people who live in these camps go through. So we've gotten a very good response to it, and it's something that, especially in Germany, I think it'll be really interesting for people to get to know what it's like for a lot of the people who are coming here and what their situation was like. And, and wh why uh, VR, why virtual reality? Why not a conventional 2D film? I think um, if you experience virtual reality, you go into the picture. You go into the life of someone else. And usually with a regular conventional one, there's still some separation and distance. You're more passive. You're still safe where you are. But when you, with this technology, because it hacks your senses, you actually feel like you're living their life. You're in their shoes. You're sitting there with them having dinner. It really is an unbelievable experience that I think really brings us equal to the people, rather than there being a hierarchy that I think regular media has. A and what kind of technology did you deploy for this film? So we partner with Verse, uh, with Chris Milk's production company in Los Angeles, and uh, it's a 360 camera um, made out of GoPros, and basically shoots in all directions, and then we stitch it together. With video stitch? Yeah, uh, okay. uh, but it's, it's actually very, right now, very cumbersome and difficult and expensive. Uh -huh. Um, and a lot of it is, you know, you have to stitch out and you have to see how you do things. So hopefully with time it will become easier and cheaper. It's already gotten better since we started. And as, as I said, it's a campaign for the UN. Yeah. Uh, wh what does it mean? Where are these films shown? What is the yeah. aim of the campaign? Yeah. So the first film, Clouds of Procedure, was debuted a year ago in Davos uh -huh. and with the Secretary General. And so really the key was with the decision makers, with heads of state. So people who are really can do something about Syria, whether it's pledge more money or come up with a political solution, we make sure that they understand the repercussions of their decisions. And also now we've partnered with UNICEF with face-to-face -face fundraisers, the people with clipboards who go around asking you for money. Um, we've given them virtual reality headsets mm. in 40 different countries and we've translated the film into 15 different languages. And one in six people who watch it donate, double the usual rate. So it becomes a campaign on the streets all throughout the world. But you have to convince those bypasses to, to, to wear the goggles yeah. and, the, and the glasses. But you'd be surprised. Everyone is really, they come after. Usually you want to avoid those people. Ah. And now people go after them because the kids see it. Everybody sees, what, what is that? Ah, I want to okay. experience it. And that's also been the reason we wanted to do it on a social issue. Most of virtual reality is for gaming or entertainment. We are now going to have it that when virtual reality becomes mainstream, our content will be ready for people, for young people to see that you can use this technology for good and to understand humanity. Uh, the VR technology is 
evolving pretty fast. You see a lot of new hardware coming up, new new glasses. Uh, you shot it with a, with a, uh, um, with one camera in one place, but new systems allow uh, the consumer to to move around yeah. a, in a room, and he is tracked. And 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 the figure in the VR is tracked too. You can see your hands when you move your yes, hands in front yes. of your face. H how does this evolve your storytelling? What new ideas come up in your head as a director? So I it's a very good question because I spend so much of my time trying to master this technique, which is it's stationary and people move around and you can't move the camera as much. Already it's changing with new sort of, uh, with HTC, with Valve. Like you said, you can track and you can change it. And it's, as an artist also, you have to really, really think about it in new ways. Uh, they've given me an opportunity to collaborate and uh, I, I need time. I, I don't understand now how to shift gears and to tell a story where you can move around now and what that would be like. So we are constantly brainstorming, thinking, trying to be creative into doing it. So it does, it does change a lot of things. And what kind of lessons have you learned so far in terms of storytelling for VR? Yeah, yeah. I think, look, regular videos that you watch online, it's jump cuts, right? Two seconds, three seconds, close up, everything. I can't do that in virtual reality. Not yet. So in a lot of ways, it's really about orchestrating action in a 360 way so that there is no one focal point of attention. There could be many. So in one of the scenes, there's a wrestling scene, but there's children watching the wrestling scene. So I point the camera more towards the children so that you wonder what you're looking behind, and then you have to turn around. So you always want to make it that people always have to turn around at each time to look at different things. So it's very different in the sense that there isn't one point that you're taking people through. Uh -huh. It's about making them feel like they're somewhere and want to stay there and want to explore a space. So it's longer shots, it's a lot more ordinary, and it's a lot more subtle than I think regular, regular media and right now. And how do you deal with motion sickness? Well, I think you have to be um, very careful in not moving the camera. And, but in the new film we have on Gaza, we experiment with putting it in a car, but we made sure that we go at a very constant speed. So if you're at a constant speed, it should be fine. And we have to do many testings on that. So in general, it shouldn't be a problem if you're not moving around. Okay. But when you move around, there's always the risk and the danger about that. And you know how many people have seen your films already? We don't have uh, specific numbers because, uh, you know, for business reasons, I think nobody is releasing those numbers uh -huh. uh, because I think uh, we're still very new and it might not be as high as people would like uh -huh. uh, because you would compare it with traditional media. Um, but, you know, we can say, how many how many countries it's in how many language it's in how much press we've gotten how many places we mm -hmm. go in that way we feel like we've really made not with the quantity but with the quality of interaction has been very high and does the reaction to vr and your films in particular differ from country to country from region to region that's a very good point I, in general it's been pretty universal uh -huh. that people feel really moved and i'd say half of the people cry or they feel some sort of sense. It's very interesting and in, uh, a lot of people from India in particular um, have reacted and said, this is not so bad, their life isn't so bad, you know, because they really deal with an extreme poverty, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm originally from India, I'm, I'm from New I was born in New York. Uh -huh. And for me, it's particularly interesting that I've shown it to a lot of Indian people and they absolutely go, oh, this, this is n the slums near my house are much worse, you uh, know. Okay. And I was like, you know, uh, so I it's that's the only one outlier country, and I feel like I can single it out because I'm also Indian. Uh, but it is it's the only thing that people say because we don't try to shock people with these yeah. stories. Yet we move them. That's the challenge, because we believe you are moved by subtlety, by art, by the music, by the by the beauty of the images, by the the sensation that can come out. Because we don't want to scare you in this because you have nowhere to go. If I make you feel disgusted or if I shock you, I disrespect you. So I, we want to make sure you feel respected, but then subtly get at you, you know? Subtly, pip, 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 and then you can have this emotional and response. And can you, can you, for example, technically, can you um, uh, insert a donate button in your film or something so like that? So, you know, we really, um, 
all startups, all tech people, we are really, really, everybody is working to do that. Nobody first thought that we could do what we did, which is to actually get you to care about a social issue. So we're one of the few people working in that space. And so I think it would be amazing that while you have the headset on, it can just say, would you like to donate or sign a petition? You know, it could just be, it doesn't have to be money. And you say yes, or you can just say it with voice recognition. It would be incredible. Um, we're trying to see if we can do that. Uh -huh. And I think whoever figures that out, uh, it can be a game changer. But no one is investing yet because it's chicken and egg, right? There isn't uh -huh. necessarily as much of an audience yet for it. There are, the headsets are just coming out. So I think we're, we're really hoping that that would be something that could change things and be a game changer. Gabor Orof, thank you much for your time. It's unvr.com. Yeah. unvr.org. Dot org, okay. Yeah. Thanks very much yeah. for your coming. Thanks yeah. very much for the project, yeah. very interesting. Gabor Orof from the UNDP. My name is Philip Banzer from the DLD 2016. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon, bye.